Hey everybody, I'm Ted from Tabex. In this tutorial, we are taking a look at the Economy Shop graphical user interface. I will probably just call it the Shop plugin or ESG UI. As it says here, this is a simple and free to use graphical user interface shop plugin. With over a million downloads, it's a very popular plugin overall, but definitely ties into Tabex very well. As you can see here, there are many different features and things that we can configure, many different commands and permissions. I will definitely not be able to cover everything. We will first take a look at what we need to get this running. There are a few dependencies. We will then take a look at what the plugin does out of the box. Then we will take a look at how we can use the shop plugin in combination with Tabex. Then before wrapping up, we will take a look at some of the commands and features inside of the shop plugin. If you ever get stuck, first thing you should do is go to the wiki. It's a very in-depth plugin, but thankfully the documentation is almost more in-depth. Any information and anything you need is in here. Otherwise, there's a link to the Discord, or of course, you can leave a comment down below. We are going to be running this on a paper server. Of course, we need the plugin itself. As a side note, the plugin even has add-ons. This is outside of the scope for this tutorial, but I wanted to note that the plugin has different add-ons. So if you want to extend the features of the plugin even more, this is possible. We are going to be using Essentials X as our economy. We also need Vault. This will basically tie everything together. We will also use Logperms to actually manage our permissions. As you can see here, I have my paper server ready with inside of the plugins folder, those plugins. The shop, Essentials, Logperms, Vault, and then Tabex. As you can see, there's already a folder for Tabex. I already have my Tabex shop connected to my Minecraft server. If you haven't done that yet, take a look in the description. There will be a tutorial showing you exactly that process. The other plugins did not start yet or created their files yet. So let's click our start file and let's allow the server to boot up and let the server create all the files that we need. Let's also open up our Minecraft and let's try to connect locally. And there we go. So now we are in the server and by default, we are able to open up the shop. But just by doing slash shop, you can see there are many things set up just out of the box. We have a lot of different sections, some of them even with more information when you hover over them. We can click on any of these settings. We can then see all the different items inside of those settings. We get the buy price, the sell price, and even some usage tips of how we can use the plugin. Bottom left, we have our character head and we can see our balance. In the middle, we can see our current page, and in the bottom, we can go back. When we have a category with multiple pages, you can see we can also navigate through them over here. And if you're wondering, you can change almost anything you see here. The pictures, the names, the categories, what they contain, and even some of the colors and titles that you see. The plugin is highly customizable and highly configurable. Let's cancel out for now. And as you can see, I am currently operator. So for example, I could set the time to night. Let's deoperate ourselves. So now we are no longer operator, as you can see. Oh, let's first of all demonstrate that I'm no longer operator. But if I do shop, you can see I'm still able to open up the shop and even go into anything and try to buy it. Even though I might not have enough money to actually buy something, I can still click through anything and it doesn't stop me or tell me I don't have the proper permissions. That's how it's set up by default. It is possible to dictate who can open what sections of the shop. People will still be able to open up the shop, but they cannot go into specific sections. If you don't want people to be able to access any of the sections by default, you could configure it this way, or you could, for example, add a VIP section, and we can then make sure that only the people inside of that VIP group can open up that section. We do this using permissions. So I'm going to make myself operator again by saying OP or operator and then my username. This way I can do slash LP for lock perms and then open up the editor by clicking here and opening this up in my browser and then trusting my browser. So we can just paste this in chat. If you are not operator, take that command, remove the slash and then just run it directly inside of your console. But since we are operator, we can do it in game. What I'm going to do, if we go to groups, we can see that we have a default group. And when looking at the permissions, if we scroll down a little bit, that we have the economy shop all. This will allow all shop sections. If we set this to false, we could block people from entering the shop. So let's give this a try. Let's go into lock perms. Oh, let's actually go into the editor. Then inside of the default group, that is what everybody gets added to by default. We are going to add another permission. I'm just going to paste it. And as you can see here, it pops up. So let's click on it. That means it actually found the permission inside of one of the plugins. In this case, the economy shop plugin. We can then change the value to false. 
we can add it to our default group, and then we can actually apply those changes to our server. Now, to demonstrate this, let's once again deoperate ourselves. Then inside of Minecraft, let's do slash shop. And then if we try to open up any of the sections, we now get a message saying that we do not have the proper permission to open up that shop section. With that information, what we could, for example, do is create a VIP group. I'm just going to call it VIP. You probably want to add a weight, a prefix, etc. I'm going to skip that for now. So now inside of the VIP group, we have the economy shop all set to true. So anybody inside of the VIP group can open up the sections. And then inside of default, we have the false. Anybody that just joins the server and doesn't have VIP automatically gets denied from opening up the sections. You can configure this exactly how you want to. You don't have to put this behind a paywall. This could, for example, also be a free package where people join your Discord. I actually don't want to block it from the default group. So I'm just going to remove this. As a demonstration, hopefully this makes sense. Something that I think makes more sense is to leave everything open by default. But if you want to create an extra section that is only usable by the VIP people. For another demonstration, let's first dive into Tabex. I already have my Tabex linked up to my Minecraft server. As you can see over here, I have several servers connected to this store. Then when going to packages, I already have a package. If you don't have a package, you can create a new package. I'm going to edit the one I already have. After filling in the basic information, I'm going to set a price of zero for now. We are then going to add game server commands as a deliverable. We can then select what server we want to execute these commands on. In this case, we only want one server, and then we can actually add the individual commands. We can dictate when the commands are executed. We can set what command to execute, and we can even have some more settings like does the player need to be online or does the player need to have some sort of required inventory slots. For example, if you'd want to directly give them a diamond sword. All of these are set to be executed on the lobby server, even if the player is offline. I'm going to make a slight change. I'm going to say the one where the diamond sword is given, I want the player to be online. Alternatively, we can also set one required slot. I will leave it on zero for now. The command that we are interested in is all the way here at the bottom. LP user name parent at VIP. I always highly recommend to double check this in game. So let's do that right now. In game, we can do lock perms user. Then we have to select what user. So I'm going to select my own username, Tabex Academy. Here we have the name variable. When clicking on help, we can see that the name variable automatically gets the username from whoever is logged in to the web store when using Minecraft Java. And that is the addition that we are using or server that we are running. So this name variable you could read as Tabex Academy. So we have Tabex Academy. We're then going to say parent add VIP. It doesn't like that because we don't have the VIP group yet, apparently. So before we run this command or claim this package, we need to make sure that we have that VIP group. I thought we created a VIP group. I don't think we ran those changes. So I'm going to paste that over here. And then we're going to remove the slash because we are running this directly in the console. So now that we created that group, let's see if it likes this a lot more. Yes, it does. So we can now actually choose between the groups that we have. So let's choose the VIP group. And now you can see that this is actually a valid command. If you run this, we would add ourselves to the VIP group. This is why you test things in game. I forgot to apply those changes earlier. So now we know that this is correct. We can copy this, but I already have it typed out. So lockperms user name parent at VIP. Instead of add, you can also use set. Take a look at the wiki to see the differences and see what works for your server. Let's update our package. Then let's go to our dashboard. Let's take a look at our web store and let's actually claim that package. Let's proceed to checkout. Let's agree. And this is a test payment. So let's complete the test payment order complete. Let's double check inside of Lockperms. We can see when going to user and selecting our user that our parent groups currently are only default. Hopefully we should be added to the VIP group once Tabex runs this command. Let's give Tabex a moment to run these commands while, oh, there we go. I said, while I get attacked. This is too perfect of a segue. It gave me a sword to defeat this. Okay, but now I'm scared and I wanna go back up. Let's check the chat here. Server said, hello. Thank you Tabex Academy for supporting the server. And we also got some log messages because we are operator. But as you can see in the console, it actually added us to the VIP group Let's open up a new editor while we die. Doesn't really matter. 
And when we check users, we can see we are now inside of the VIP group as well. So that worked as expected. Now you can make your changes to the VIP group any way you want, and this will automatically reflect to anybody that is inside of the VIP group. So let's respawn. Let's make it day. There we go. Nice view. Now let's actually do some fun stuff. Let's add another category and let's only give that to the VIP group that we just created. On the server, let's go to plugins. Let's go to our economy shop folder. We have quite a few folders and files that we can go through and configure. We have two different things. We have shops and we have sections. The sections talks more about the menus you see over here. So when we go into sections and for example, open up farming, we can see that this is enabled true, which we can see. Slot 20, 20, 20, yeah, 20. Slot 20, and we see some more information that we can also change. If we want to take a look at the actual items inside of the shop or inside of that section, like I just said, we go to shop and then farming. Here we can actually see those items, bamboo, bee nest, beehive. With all the information like the buy price and the sell price, or you could add more if you want to. You could go in and change all these individual prices. If you look, for example, at the blocks, there are six different pages of things you could change, etc. This is a lot of work, but highly configurable, and you can make it exactly how you want it for your server. If you're going to remove an item, of course, make sure that you don't mess with any of the formatting. Let's say we want to disable the potions. We could go back to the sections, go to potions. We can either completely delete it. I would not recommend doing that. I would just set hidden to true, save it, reload the plugin, open up the shop, and as you can see, it's now gone. As you can see here, it's also possible to add sections through commands, delete sections. I just decided to do it directly in the files and reloading the plugin. Let's say we want to add a section over here that is VIP only. Let's first of all create the section. So inside of these sections, I'm just going to take one. So let's take... Um, let's take blocks, for example, I'm just going to copy and paste this. Then let's rename this to extra, for example. Then inside of this, let's open this up and let's make sure that this is in the fifth place, but we actually start counting at zero. So zero, one, two, three, four. So we want this in number four. We don't want this to be hidden and we want to set a different name. So let's call this extra and let's call this extra as well and then let's change the material so i'm just going to use diamond block so under the material yes let's use diamond block then let's save this and then let's reload the plugin so let's reload and now if we go to the shop we can see the extra section over here and when clicking on it, we can see that there is a example power stick. It says in red, this example item was added to the shop because the shop YML config did not contain a section for extra. So when going to the shop folder, we now have a extra.yml. And we can see that this item is in here, just like we had with all the other YML files. Let's add the lectern that we have in our hand to this section. Just as a demonstration, of course, you can add whatever you want. So I'm actually going to leave this open right here. I have it in my active hand. Let's do eShop, add hand item. We want to add it to extra. What is the buy price? Let's say 100, and then the sell price is 90. Now, when opening up the YML file, we can see we have two different items. So let's delete this one, the example item. Let's delete this line as well. Let's change this to number one, and then let's save. And then again, let's reload the plugin open up the shop. And as you can see, the only thing is now the lectern with the buy and sell price that we set. You could change the picture or the material if you want to. Let's make this a VIP only section. So from the documentation, you can see here, we can give access to a specific section. So let's open up a new log perms editor. Then let's go to our groups. And let's first of all, make sure that inside of the VIP group, we actually give access to the extra section. It should pop up in the list. Make sure you choose the correct one. We set the value to true for VIP, and then we go to default. We paste the same permission. Make sure we choose the correct one, and then let's set it to false. Add it to the group, apply those changes to the server. And now anybody that's inside of the default group should not be able to open up the extra section or shop. And anybody that's inside of the VIP group 
should be able to open it up. Slight correction, if we set it up like I just showed you, that would only work if you are setting the parent, not if you are adding. Because if the player is in both, it would still block them and they would not be able to access the VIP group. So I removed that permission over here. Now, if I try to open up the shop, you can see that I'm able to open it up. So if I take this permission and add it to the default group, like we just had, set it to false, actually need to click on it. Let's set it to false. And then let's add it to the default group and click on apply. Let's run this in the console to actually apply those changes. Let's reload the plugin and let's, for demonstration, let's deoperate ourselves. Now you will see if we go into the shop, we are not able to because the hard permission from the default group, you will see since we are in both groups, it will hard block us from entering that section. Don't make the same mistake I just made. If you're using set like we did before is fine. If you're using at as the parent, make sure you don't hard block it on any of the other groups. If there is a chance that a player can be in both of those groups. So I just wanted to make a quick side note just to clear that up. This is how we can dictate who can open up what sections inside of the shop. The config.yml is how the plugin should function. Inside of all of these sections, you have the different kind of shop categories. Inside of the actual shop files, you have all the individual items and all the information for the items. Next up, I would recommend to read all the different permissions that are available, decide what group should or shouldn't have those permissions, and then configure your groups exactly how you want to. Then, as I demonstrated, you can use TabX to move and remove players from that group. They will then automatically inherit all those different permissions. Optionally, you can even allow players to sell items and add items, or of course, again, specific groups to sell and add different items. Even though this barely scratched the surface of what the plugin does, this should hopefully give you a nice jump off point to get started configuring the shop graphical user interface, and also use it in combination with TabX. If anything is unclear, again, feel free to leave a comment down below. And as always, thank you for watching and good luck with your Tabex store.